everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week I am going to give myself kind of a little break of a project between my Brunswick that I just finished last week, if you haven't seen that video I will link it down below, and next week where I am beginning a brand new huge historical cosplay project that is scary but also super super exciting. But I wanted to do something small this week especially because this weekend is actually Christmas <laughs> hence the Christmas dress. I know obviously you're watching this after Christmas but I decided that I wanted to make another doll dress and I know that a lot of you are not here for the doll content but then again if you clicked on this video you probably are. So I am making an 18th century dress this time. This is another Pemberley Threads pattern that I bought off of her Etsy and to be honest I was not going to make this pattern at first except that I then saw this dress right here which was made by Anne Van Doren Designs and I just need it. Like, <laughs> it's so beautiful. I, I need this. And then I was like, okay, so I just made this red silk Brunswick. What if I make a red silk Charlotte dress, 1780s dress? It's obviously not going to be the same as the Brunswick because I don't want to figure out how to pattern that in doll size. So I am just using this pattern. But I did run into maybe one little thing that is going to make this much more difficult. So let's go look at the fabric and I will show you why this project is going to be more of a challenge than I thought it would be. So here's the thing. I really want to use this red silk that is actually left over from a Regency dress I made several years ago and then I used it for like binding on the Brunswick. But this, this is the extent of fabric. And I was kind of thinking, okay, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then I looked at the pattern pieces. And just for example, this is supposed to be cut on the fold right here. This one is cut on the fold right here. And this one also cut on the fold right here. Obviously that's not going to work to cut everything on the fold. So I am going to have to alter this at least a little. Ideally, I would love to be able to cut the petticoat front on the fold. So we'll see, I'm gonna really try to do that just cause otherwise I'm gonna get a big old seam right up the center front. But this is the petticoat back. I don't mind putting a seam there. And then this is the overskirt back like the part that's attached to the bodice and this again I could make a seam in the back it is open front so this is already the front that's open but I could make a seam and it won't be a problem so I have that piece I have a slightly smaller piece which will fit one of these but not on the fold and then I've got like these other pieces that are not at all big enough for skirt pieces but they'll be plenty fine for bodice pieces and sleeve pieces like these are all nice and tiny I can literally even cut that out of the sort of scraps that are over here so I'm not worried about kind of filtering those in at all but it's time to puzzle this out and try to figure this part out oh yeah and also there's a tiny hole right here in the fabric because that's helpful yeah so <laughs> I'm gonna go puzzle and see if I can get all the skirt pieces cut out I have cut nearly all of the pieces out I just have the sleeves left and also this ruffle that I didn't really notice at first was a cut to on the fold yeah so this ruffle is going to be immensely pieced like it just has to be it will need to eventually wind up being two times 33 by two and three quarters but these are the pieces I have left as you can see they are all quite small they're a really nice size for this sleeve but not so much for a really long and fairly wide strip and the ones over there are bias so these are the remainder a lot of which have bias edges on them so yeah, I'm going to start piecing this. We'll see how many strips I will need to wind up making the two strips in the pattern. I did it. All of the silk pieces are cut out and this is the scrap pile left. So yeah, manage everything. Oh, this, these are how many pieces are going to make up this ruffle. I lost count, but I added them all together and it equals the same distance. So um, yeah, it's a lot of pieces in that ruffle. 
So just FYI, for printed home patterns, I tend to actually leave the instructions on the computer so that I can see everything in color, not waste all the paper. So I only print out the pieces that are the actual pattern pieces. So I'm starting with the petticoat, which is what the pattern says. And first it has you like serge or just finish the lower edges of the sides of the petticoat. I do obviously also have to finish the one where I cut this and then join them together. So I'm gonna do that first, but I'm just going to serge those bits and then and we will start the assembly. Little note on order of operations change here. It said to press these back a quarter inch and then do the seams and then like press this the rest of the way while you're pressing the seam open down here. I felt like that was just kind of odd. So I did my seam first because it goes up into this notched area. So I sewed my seam first, pressed that open and then just turned this twice, quarter inch turn on each side. And now I'm debating about doing it by hand or doing it by machine because this is such like thin taffeta that I feel like a hand stitch is almost gonna show just as much as machine. But I don't know, I might do it by hand. So I did wind up deciding to do these by machine, to stitch those by machine. That's the opening for the pocket slits. I also decided to give this a machine hem. It says to do hand hem in the pattern, but like this is about to get covered by a ruffle. So it doesn't really matter. Speaking of ruffles, that's what I have right here. So this is really easy. It's just all of those pieces then like sewed end to end to end. And then narrow hems are turned so that it's like quarter inch folded twice on both top and bottom. And then two gathering stitches are run along the top and pulled up. And now this is going to get put on the bottom of the petticoat. Now that the ruffle has been added on to the hem, it is time to pleat this up to the waistband. You can see all the little like pleat markings here for the folds. And then these are the waistbands here. So there's one for the front, one for the back, and these will get sewn right sides together and flipped and little ties added on the sides, which I have to figure out what I'm using for the ties. And then the petticoat part will be done. And with that, the petticoat portion is finished. These ties are just ribbon and basically they get sandwiched in as you're doing up this seam here before you turn the waistband right sides out. But yeah, isn't that gorgeous? I mean, it's got so much body and swoosh and scroop. Love it. So now it's time to move on to the gown that goes over. I'm gonna do things a little bit out of order because I wanna start by hemming the edges and the hem of the skirt portion. Now on to the bodice pieces. I have to admit, I'm kind of ignoring one of the steps in the pattern, which they say to stay stitch all the curves and then like clip the curves and then pin and sew them together. I'm not doing that, they fit fine as is. So yeah, I have bodice pieces pinned together, they're gonna st get stitched together and then stitched to each other and also the front pieces until I have the lining all assembled separately from the silk pieces. So at this point I have both the silk part and the cotton lining part all assembled together. Look at all these tiny little quarter inch seams. Now don't make the same mistake that I did and actually sew the side seams together also because you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to sew the shoulder seams but not the side seams because now we move on to sleeves and we do a little bit of prep on the sleeves meaning serge along the sides, turn up the hem, run a little bit of ease stitching up here and then these wind up just going in like flat, I don't know if this is the right direction, I didn't look at notches, but basically they go in flat like that to the arm size, and then the whole side gets sewn up all together. So I'm gonna go do that now. Well, I guess it's a sign that it's past my bedtime and I should have already stopped even though I was going to go till midnight, which it is right now. I put my sleeves in, but you might notice that the hem is on the right side now. And I did such a nice little hand hem. So now I'm trying to decide, is it gonna be harder actually to like, undo the hem and flip it to the other side? Or is it going to be harder to reset the sleeves and redo them? Because that was kind of a pain. Ugh, I don't know, but that's tomorrow's problem. So, yay. I just wanted to take a quick little interruption from the sewing to say thank you so much to everyone who sent me holiday cards. You guys are just absolutely the sweetest. So thank you so much 
to Rebecca and Sarah and Becky, especially Becky. Oh my gosh, the Joann's gift card. So, so sweet. Thank you so much. Mary and Rebecca and Monica and Lucy. Oh my God, all the way from New Zealand. Wow. You guys just absolutely warmed my heart. It was so sweet to receive all of your holiday cards. Thank you so much. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. And that goes for everyone too, not just everyone who sent me cards. Hope you all had wonderful holidays. But now let's go ahead and get back to sewing. I got the sleeves all done the correct way out. You're looking at the inside right now. There is the outside. And now that means that I can go ahead and attach the skirts. I did, by the way, decide to hand hem the hems on this skirt and also the sleeves just because these were going to be more obvious. So I have a pretty nice hem from the outside that doesn't really like show the stitches very much. I just need to press it. And yeah, now this, which has been gathered at the top, can get connected to the bodice and we're nearly there and the skirt is attached. I kind of wish that this was like tiny knife pleats instead of gathers, but the pattern called for gathers and I didn't want to mess with trying to figure out the math for knife pleats. But yeah, look at that, it looks all pretty. So now we just go ahead and we put in the lining to the bodice and then I'm pretty sure we're done. So for the lining, I am going to follow the instructions about stay stitching. So the arm size gets stay stitched and then the curves get clipped and this also gets stay stitched and clipped. This one's gonna get pressed right now, but before I press this one, this whole thing is actually going to get attached in to the bodice itself. So basically like all of the edges, front, neckline, etc., all of that gets stitched right sides together to this and then turned, and then we can really kind of finish putting the lining in, like stitching the side seams, and I think hand stitching the arm size and the hem into the dress to cover all of those seam allowances. So this is the lining all stitched in. I haven't clipped any of the curves or corners yet, so I'm about to do that, and I think it just looks so cute. And this is what it looks like with everything all neatly pressed, all those nice edges. Now what happens is that the lining gets stitched in. I've already pinned it in place and folded up all of the edges. So the lining is gonna get stitched in around the arm size and at the hem of the bodice here by hand. And then the dress portion will be all complete. But before I go do that, I'm going to start on the other two components of this outfit, which is a little ruffled bum pad and a little ruffled fichu. So I have my pieces cut out here. I wound up piecing the ruffle for the bum pad just because again I was working with like scraps of muslin and then this is actually not muslin. This is I think it's batiste maybe or like a voile. It's a much thinner lighter. You can see my fingers through it. I wanted something kind of light and airy for the fichu. So I've got the ruffle here which I cut all in one piece and then the fichu itself. There's two of the bum pad pieces by the way and I'm using ribbon instead of tool tapes. That's what I wound up using on this petticoat as well by the way. I did wind up using ribbon. It calls for tool tape, but whatever. So these are all the pieces here. The first thing that happens on this ruffle is that we sew the short sides or right sides together and then turn everything out and then we fold it and do gathering stitches. So this winds up getting the folded edge as like the hem, which is really nice. On the other hand, the ruffle on the fichu does not act so nice to us. In fact, what happens over here is that we fold one edge with a really, really narrow hem, both on here and then also on like the inner neck edge here of the fichu. I'm really kind of tempted to do it by hand, to be honest, because this is such sheer cotton that it's just gonna show everything. But at the same time, kind of wanted this done like now, and obviously it's not going to be, because I'm about to have to go to bed. So yeah, I think I might press and pin this and then actually sew it by hand tomorrow while watching Christmas movies. And I'll kind of put this together last as my final piece for this little Christmas dress. The ruffle and ties are now pinned onto the bum pad. Now the pattern says to base this in place. I don't think that's necessary. So I'm just going to put a couple extra pins on, put this layer on top, and then this gets sewn from the dot that's over here all the way around and over to here. I also didn't do the stay stitching right here on the curve. I just, again, don't really feel like it's necessary. It's just a bum pad. So once that gets stitched and turned right sides out, then it's time to stuff the bum pad and then we can close up that little area, probably by hand to be honest. And then there's little quilting lines they get done across this to make kind of that like petal shaped bum pad that we're all so used to. now time 
time to stuff this with fiberfill, but I'm pretty sure my fiberfill is in the garage. It's freezing and I don't want to go out there. So I'm going to stuff it with all of the cutoff bits from the serger that has been just accumulating for a really long time. It was a very messy idea, but it did work quite well, and it was kind of neat to revisit a whole bunch of old projects. I have little cutoffs going back to Daniel Deronda in here, actually. Now, tomorrow I'm going to hand sew this shut and do my little quilty lines across, and the bum pad will be done, and then I will also do the fichu. I did a little whip stitch so the bum pad has been closed up. Now I'm going to see if I can sew the little petal shapes across this, but honestly this is pretty thick since it's stuffed with the like threads and not with the fiber fill, so I don't really think my machine's going to be able to sew across this, and I don't really think it matters enough to stitch it by hand, so it might wind up looking like this, but let's give it a try to stitch across. So yeah, I was right. Uh, these ones worked fine, but as you can see by this kind of line of attempted stitching, the needle went in, but it actually never caught because it's just too thick, and it was really too thick to even try to go under the foot, and then my needle tried to break, and I realized none of the stitches were happening. So yeah, I'm going to see if that will kind of iron out, but uh, we're just going to go with those two little bits on the bum pad. I realized that I didn't really show you any of the construction on the fichu, but it is done. Like I told you before, I decided to do the hems by hand so there's a narrow hem here that's by hand and then this hem is also by hand so you know hopefully they look nice and pretty like that and then this is just gathered up attached by machine and then actually before you press it you just surge them both together so it kind of creates just a nice clean finish and then it gets pressed up so from the outside you really can't tell that that is surged even though it's a single layer but yeah that is the fichu all done so I have bought myself a little something special for Christmas and she is going to be the one to wear all of my historical doll dresses that I have made or that I'm going to make in the future and I figured let's go ahead since it is now Christmas day when I'm filming this let's go ahead and open up my new doll and get her all dressed up. I haven't had a new American Girl doll since I was like 10. And this is a brand spanking new one, right? Like from yeah. American Girl. I am breaking the bonds that chain her to this box. Oh, look at that hair. Oh, look at that hair. And it's in a net, just wait. actually laced there's no they're like know. rain boots they're super cute I would wear boots like that I never had a modern doll I mean she's not gonna be modern for long so this is Yvette and I have to decide if I'm going to rename her to something maybe more historical and now I think it's time to get her dressed in her new 18th century dress. We are now ready to get Yvette dressed. I have borrowed some items from Felicity. This is a shift from Felicity, like an American Girl shift, that I actually bought for Elizabeth because my Elizabeth didn't have one. And then I have also borrowed some stockings that I use for Felicity that I've had since I was a kid and Felicity's original meat shoes. And I have also put Yvette's hair just up into a little loose bun and covered it with the cap from Felicity's spring dress. I am not going to put stays on Yvette right now because I have not made her stays and Elizabeth and Felicity are both wearing their stays. So we are going to wear this dress staysless. Oh my goodness. But I think otherwise we're doing pretty well on the undergarments here. So let's go ahead and start getting her dressed starting with the bum pad. I also don't have any more stands apparently. I'm tempted to go steal one from another doll. 
but we're gonna try to do this to see if Yvette can actually stand up on her own. Everyone seems to be able to get dolls to stand on their own and I have a big problem with it. So I don't know if it's me or what, but we'll give this a try. So first the bum pad gets tied around the waist. This one does seem like it turned out to be maybe a bit on the firm side. Obviously stays would go on first if she had stays. Oh yeah, that is a big old bum pad. I may wind up taking this stuffing out and restuffing it with polyfill because that would be a lot softer and also I probably wouldn't stuff it quite as firm because I have a feeling, I don't know, this just seems like it's going to be huge. But let's go ahead and put her petticoat on and see if my fears are true. Whenever I put 18th century petticoats on, I always tie the back one first just because that's more difficult to grab. On my personal petticoats, I usually make the ties so long from the front side that I can actually wrap them around to the front and tie them in the front since that is easier. But here we are tying in the back. And now we can put the gown on. Always so hard to stuff those shift sleeves into the garment sleeves, whether that's for me or a doll. And now before we close up the front, let's see how we want to do the fichu in comparison with the bodice. I pinned her bodice shut while laying her down because I found that it was going to be impossible to do that up. Now obviously the chemise is sticking out way all over, which feels really relatable. So we are going to cover that up with her fichu which I'm also going to put on while laying her down. I decided for the fichu to do that sort of wraparound look like you see sometimes in the 1780s. I do think that it's, A, it's not actually long enough to wrap all the way around, so it's pinned on the sides here, and it just seems like it's a little thick for this, but I don't know, it seemed like the best way that it fit. I'll have to play around with the fichu more, especially when she has a stand. For now, I'm just trying to keep her from not falling over. But I do think that with this fichu look, I definitely need a better cap. So I'll probably be making her a larger, more 1780s cap soon to go with this outfit. But overall, it is super, super cute. I think she looks wonderful. The silk just gleams, and I'm honestly quite pleased with how it turned out. So here is the front look and here is that gorgeous back I just love all the little seams on the back it's so historically accurate I think it just looks so cute with that little point in the center too and again the gown silk is just freaking gorgeous and actually the bum pad is nicely balanced it's doing a much better job than I thought it would so overall I think she looks great so overall, I think that this was a wonderful little like palette cleanse project. I am both very, very happy with my new Christmas present to myself, Yvette. I think she is just so pretty. And I'm also, of course, very happy with this dress. I mean, making it out of silk is like next level, but it was nice because I was using up such small scraps that I didn't feel guilty about making it out of silk. And it just, I mean, you can't beat silk, right? Like that scroop, that stiffness too. I mean, look at that body. Like she doesn't have a petticoat underneath the petticoat. That is just the petticoat. It's amazing. I'm not entirely sure that I'm in love with the fichu. I think that it might have needed to be made out of maybe lighter weight fabric or maybe it just needed to be like a little bit more shaped. And it also probably would have helped to either be shorter or longer, like longer to do this wrap look shorter if I just want it to end right here at the neckline. Post outro Rebecca here for a moment. I actually redid the fichu by like tucking it in and around her bodice and then repinning the bodice over so that it looks like this. And I think that is a much better look. It does make it a little puffy around here, but I think that's a much cuter look for the fichu in general. So fichu is fixed. And she definitely does need a new cap, but overall, I think she looks so lovely and I'm excited to make more outfits for her sometime in the future. I'll probably do them like every now and then, maybe every few months as like a palette cleanse project or something like that, uh, just so that she has a little time traveling wardrobe because that is kind of my plan for this doll is that she will be my model for anything that I make 
and that she will kind of get to travel through time in that way of wearing just a whole variety of different historical outfits that I have made. I know that doll clothes are not for everyone though, so hopefully you made it through this video. If you did, please do give me some name suggestions for what I might name her, because I'm not sure that I want to keep her as Yvette, just since that is like the modern doll and she is obviously not. So yeah, leave me a comment with name suggestions that she might be. I mean, I already have uh, 18th century and I have 1830s for her and I will have other stuff as well that is all probably like in my eras as in like 18th century through Edwardian. So she might wear anything. Who knows what I'll make down the road. But if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. Or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Mirage, and Laura. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!